Today is November 6th. It's the 311th day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. Today is International Day for Preventing the Exploitation of the Environment in War and Armed Conflict, an annual observance established by the United Nations back in 2001. According to their website, UN.org, quote, Mankind has always counted its war casualties in terms of dead and wounded soldiers and civilians, destroyed cities, and livelihoods. However, the environment has often remained the unpublicized victim of war. Water wells polluted, crops torched, forests cut down, soils poisoned, and animals killed to gain military advantage. On this International Day for Preventing the Exploitation of the Environment in War and Armed Conflict, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon urges governments, businesses, and citizens around the world to prioritize environmental care and the sustainable management of natural resources for preventing conflict, building peace, and promoting lasting prosperity. So with all of that in mind, happy International Day for Preventing the Exploitation of the Environment in War and Armed Conflict. On this day in 1860, Abraham Lincoln is elected the 16th President of the United States. Lincoln is the first Republican to be elected President. The Republican Party is only six years old at this point, formed in 1854 as an anti-slavery party. Lincoln plays an important role in the shaping of the party. Previously, he serves in the U.S. House of Representatives for one term and the Illinois House of Representatives before that for eight years. He gets out of politics in 1849, having pledged to only serve one term in Congress. He returns to Springfield, Illinois to pick up his law career, but gets back into politics in 1854, when he runs for U.S. Senate, motivated to put a stop to the spread of slavery into the West, as is allowed under the Kansas-Nebraska Act. He runs as a Whig, but withdraws from the race when it's clear that he will not win. Lincoln runs again for Senate in 1858, this time as a Republican, and he garners national attention for his famous debates with opponent Stephen Douglas, debates primarily about slavery. Lincoln loses the election to Douglas, but is now positioned as one of the leaders of the Republican Party. In 1860, the Democratic Party is fractured. The Democratic National Convention is held in South Carolina and lasts for weeks and ends in a split with a northern faction nominating Lincoln's old foe, Stephen Douglas, later in a second convention in Baltimore. And a southern faction that splits off from the South Carolina Convention meets in Virginia and nominates John Breckinridge, adopting a pro-slavery platform. The Republicans are a bit divided as well, but collectively they nominate Abraham Lincoln due to his national notoriety after the 1858 Lincoln-Douglas debates. Despite his opposition to slavery and his anti-slavery expansion platform, abolitionists in the party worry that he's not anti-slavery enough. With the fractured Democratic Party resulting in a split pro-slavery vote, Abraham Lincoln wins the electoral vote with only 40% of the popular vote and is elected president on this day in 1860. When news of his victory reaches the South, southern states begin seceding from the nation. Lincoln does not acknowledge southern states' right to secession and does not yield federal property within the seceding states. By the time he is inaugurated in March 1861, Seven southern states have seceded, and the following month, April 1861, the Civil War begins. There are 55 days left in the year.
On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening today. Short one. On This Day in 1947, the news program Meet the Press makes its television debut. The show is originally a radio program created and hosted by Martha Roundtree. It goes on the air in 1945. Roundtree develops the show for television and acts as its first moderator when it premieres on NBC on this day in 1947. Meet the Press is the longest running program in U.S. television history. So if you're still listening, if it's Sunday, it's on this day podcast. Talk to you tomorrow.